Hi guys, I just wanted to do a quick video to show you what has come up on uh, Texturing XYZ. So Texturing XYZ has been releasing this week tons and tons of new contents. And with this new contents came a new texture for creatures. And I love doing creatures and I wanted to show you how to use these packs. So if we have a look at the uh, library from Texturing XYZ, uh, just having a look at the animal uh, library, we can see that there are tons and tons of new packs. And with these new packs, there are a new way of using them. So if we have a look at, for example, the animal caiman uh, body, we can see that what is included if we um, if you purchase pack, you can see that you will be uh, deliver some albedo maps, some roofness, normal, height, bump and cavities. And having them all together, we can uh, ask ourselves how to use them for uh, texturing purposes. And the way I'm using them uh, into a uh, Mari makes me want to want to pack them into just one file that I will be able to uh, project directly onto my model. So I made a tutorial long time ago and I think that this one was uh, pretty long and pretty hard to follow because there, are, there were a lot of explanations. So I just wanted to make you uh, to make for you a video that show you how I pack uh, my uh, texture all together. So let's have a look at uh, what we can grab from texturing XYZ. So I will just use for this example uh, the ostrich a fit pack that I've been using lately and I think that this pack is really uh, really probably one of the best that uh, we can use uh, from uh, texturing XYZ one of the sharpest when dealing with um, with scales so just have a look at uh, what we can find just opening one pack for example this one so we will find uh, all the maps that we that we had uh, on the website, but we don't want to pack them all together. We want to use, for example, just the eight map, uh, the cavity, and the burp map, and those are the three that I've been using the most. The others are here for mainly references, so you will be able to uh, remake them like in Mari or in Photoshop, but uh, you don't want to project them directly for the moment. So we will just unzip all the pack, all the textures that, that we can have. Okay, so packing them all together into Nuke, I will use the bump uh, cavity and eight. So let's drag, uh, drop and drag all the maps that I will be using. So I will just drag them directly into, uh, into Nuke. And let's have a look at uh, what we have in the different files. So if we just have a look at the 8 map, for example, so the 8 map is the 32 bit uh, information, 32, by 32 bit maps, and we have information only in the R channel. So if I have a look at the R channel, or if I have a look at the green and the blue one, you can see that they are both empty. So we just want to use the R channel. So within the R channel, uh, something that we will have uh, in the bump map and cavity with, will be the same. So uh, both the blue and green channel will be empty. So we just want to use the R channel and copy it into the information of the uh, green of the eight and uh, copy the information uh, of the R channel from the cavity into the information of the blue channel of the eight map. So in order to do that, we just have, uh, first of all, to um, have, a look, have a look at the mid value of the uh, bump map. So comparing the mid value uh, of the bump map and the eight map, we can see that the mid value is different because the information that we have in the bump value are 16, beep, 16 bits and the information that we have in the eight map are 32 bits. So we want, first of all, to convert the information from the BUM channel to match uh, to, the, to the one of the 8 map. So in order to do that, just double click on the BUM channel and in the color space uh, mode, we will ask Nuke to convert it to linear, linear, um, 
linear color space. We will do the same with the cavity. So select the cavity, go in the color space and uh, put, it, put it into a linear mode. Then we want to copy the information into the eight map in order to combine, to combine them into just one map. And to do that, we just want to use a copy node. So just enter copy in order to make this node appear. Then we will uh, plug it so the main value, the value of the B, will be directly the, val the value of the 8 map. And then select the value from the bump. And we will ask to the copy node to copy the information from the red channel into the information of the green channel of the 8 map. So if we have a look at the 8 map from now, we can see that um, having a look at all the three channels altogether, we will find information into the red channel, so the information for the displacement. We will find information into the green channel, so the information for the bump. And the uh, blue channel for the moment will remain empty. So we want to copy the information of the cavity, just like we did for the information of the bump. So just create a new copy node. Put it like this, select the information of the cavities and into the uh, information, the properties of the uh, second copy node, we will select the uh, RGB R channel and copy it directly into the RGB blue channel. And now if we have a look at the, all the channel uh, all together, we can see that we get this uh, colored uh, beautiful map. And this is the map that we will want to use directly into Mari and we will want to project it uh, onto our model. So having a look at the R channel, we get the 8 map, the green channel, we get the uh, bump map and the blue channel give us the information for the cavities. So those are the main uh, maps that I'm using. And again, this is just matching to the workflow that I made uh, doing all my creatures. But you could also using another map that is provided onto, um, into any XYZ pack. For example, if you prefer to use the uh, specular map into the blue information, you just have to select your specular and just replace the last, connect the last connection that I made. So from now you will find the uh, 8 map, the bump map and the uh, specular information directly into your file. And also do not forget, because this map is a 16-bit map, do not forget to convert it directly into uh, linear information. So just getting back to uh, my um, all-in-one file. I will now export it directly out of Nuke. So just create a, a right node. And within this right node, I will export it directly into this folder. So copy the name of the folder, just enter a name of the map. So for example, Ostrich fits all in one. 01 because this will be my first iteration and just uh, select uh, an export format. So for this example, I will use the TIFF format, hit enter. And then I will have to enter the data type. And this is really important because you don't want to compress and to lose any information coming out from all the files that you packed on together. So you will ask Nuke to export a 32-bit map. Then you can choose uh, the, compress the compression that you want and just enter Ronda. And from now, Nuke will export my file and I will be able to show you how to pack uh, the, to give the exact same file into Photoshop. So doing the same manipulation into Photoshop, we want to copy the information from the bump and cavity directly into the 8 map. So we want to start with the 8 map because the 8 map, like I said, is 32 bits information. So we will find uh, all 
and all the information that we need and we just we don't want to use the bumper cavities uh, to start to to pack on to pack on all the map together because bump and cavities have less information than the than the eight so just start by opening the eight map so we want to go directly into the uh, channel into the channel information and like we have seen it in nuke we can see that we have only one channel we have only a gray channel so we want to convert this into a free three channel uh, into a three channel map so we will go into the image option image uh, menu we will go into the mode and ask Photoshop to convert it into uh, RGB RGB map. So once it will be converted, we will be able to see that we from now we will have a green and blue channel, but they are all displaying the same information. So the information from the R channel from the displacement has been copied directly into the green and into the blue. And we want to find back um, the bump and cavity to replace the information from the 8 map. So we will ask uh, Photoshop to copy them for us. So we will open the bump and cavity, copy them into Photoshop. So we will start with the bump information. We just have to go into the bump uh, window, then select the information from the gray, chan the gray channel. It's Control A to select all of the map, all of the uh, pixels from the map. Control C to copy them. Go back into the 8 map. Then we, will, we want to copy the information. We want to pass them into the green channel. So just select the green channel. Same operation, do Control A and Control V to copy the information from the, uh, from the former map. And something that is great with uh, Photoshop is that, uh, as I, as we can see, Photoshop did for us the uh, conversion for the uh, mid value for the color space information. So the gamma correction has already been applied directly onto my file. So now we have uh, the 8 map and the bump map that has been packed on all together, but we still want to, uh, co to pack the cavity. So same operation for this, go into the cavity window, select the gray uh, channel from the cavity window, from the cavity map, Control A to select everything, and Control C to copy it, go back into the 8 map, go into the blue channel, Control A and Control V to pass the information from the cavity. And then if I have a look now at the RGB value altogether, I can see that I have the exact same map, uh, same as the one that I did into Nuke. So I will, be able, I will be able to export this map out of Photoshop. Control Shift S and then rename it Ostrich Field. Ostrich fit all in one, uh, zero two for the iteration. Save the information. And something that is really important here is to set the bit depth into a 32 bit uh, information and select for the image compression. If you want to reduce the size of your file, you can still select the zip, uh, zip information or the uh, lazy compression and just click on OK to export your map. So two different maps, one from Photoshop and another one from Nuke, but uh, they are the same. Uh, you will be able to use to use them both into uh, into Mari to project them and to use a pen through to get uh, your information directly onto your model. So from now, I will just show you quickly how I project them and how I set on my uh, my shader directly into Mari uh, to use this uh, this file for displacement and bump informations.
Okay, so let's open up a project into Mari and this is just to show you quickly how to use the files. So uh, from now I will just do a new a new channel and I will also import the files that I uh, precedently uh, compact um, packed on together into new core Mari uh, or, or Photoshop. So let's create a new sh a new channel and this new channel will have to be 32 bits as well. So this will be my displacement. Uh, let's name it Mari displacement. And for the information I, I want to set it um, maybe something like like eight key or let's let's do it just four key for the uh, sake of demonstration. And the depth will have to be 32 bits, just like on the files that I exported precedently. For the color information, I want to set it to a mid value, intensity of 0 0.5, okay. Color space will, uh, will have to be linear. And then I just have to, um, to apply. Okay, so from now I will have my file that is, uh, my channel that is available directly into Mari, but I, I still want to import the uh, image that I exported just before. So I will go into the image manager and just uh, open up the new file that I made. So uh, let's go into the desktop and uh, packing XYZ and I will open just one of the maps. So just open the all in one zero uh, one. Okay, and from now my map will be loaded. So I will be able to use it with the pen through. So just to show you how to set up your shader, if you want to display it correctly, so we will have a look at the shader. And for that, I will create a new shader. So let's create a, an um, Arnold shader. So a AI standard. I will, I will use my uh, displacement map, my Mari displacement map um, as a diffuse color for, from the uh, beginning, just to have a look at it. And I will also plug directly my map into the bump map. So let's have a look at um, the information, the properties for the bump and for the uh, diffuse. For the diffuse map, I want to set it at a value of uh, one. I also want to have a bit of specular information in order to see how the uh, specular will react directly onto the surface. So let's add some specularity to the uh, to the shader, and let's add a little bit of fresnel so so we are closer to an, a non metallic uh, non metallic object, and with a fresnel of, for example, something like 0 0.07. This will uh, this will be enough for us. Okay, so let's go back into the channel property and let's see what we have into the channel. So uh, let's open up this channel, put it here. So for the moment, I just have my base layer that I will be able to paint directly on. So let's use the uh, pen through pen through uh, option pen through tool into Mari and use the ostrich feet map to pen through. So we are now ready to paint. Um, Mari will take a bit of time just to load your texture, but uh, it's okay. It's because your texture has been compressed and uh, it has also a lot of information. So just wait until Mari open up your file. And from now we will be able to paint through the texture. So for example, if I want to apply just a bit of scales onto the, uh, the feet of my dragons, just have to set the size format for my texture. And then I will have to pen through like this.
and bake my, my texture. But uh, something that I can see for the moment is that I think that I have uh, no information for uh, the bump or um, displacement directly on the model. But it's just because my uh, bump uh, is so subtle the value is not uh, is not enough so i will have to rise up this value in order to make the displacement directly appearing onto my model so just give another stroke to have more information to display before i can adjust the value of my uh, in, within my shader so i do something like like this to start with then i will go back into the shaders have a look at what is inside, uh, what is set for the bump value, and I, I can see that I have a really low value. So I want to rise up this value in order to make my uh, displacement appearing. Something that I can do as well is to remove the information from the uh, diffuse channel because I don't have to display uh, the bump information if I want to have a look only at the displacement. And this is it. I mean, I just have to paint uh, all the bump and all the displacement information, having it set up directly into Mari. So as long as I have my uh, shader, my uh, layer that is selected, my layer for the, from the Mari displacement channel, I can paint through my texture and see directly displaying onto the model. Okay, so one last step that uh, we may want to do in order to display uh, the information from the displacement and the information for the bump is to share the layer that we have, the first layer that we have. So I will show you how to do that. So this is our first projection layer. So let's call that base displacement layer. We will put this layer into a group. So this will be our base disp group. And we will want to uh, share this layer. We will want to isolate only the, uh, the red channel, for example. So for sharing the red channel, something that we can do is to uh, for isolating the red channel, something that we can do is uh, going into the adjustment and we will use the copy channel adjustment. And this copy channel will be set with the red, um, red channel by default. So we will be able to see uh, only the information for the uh, displacement. So we will call this layer isolate our copy channel. And then something that we want to, to do for from now is to isolate the information from the green channel. So we will not uh, do it directly with the isolate red channel, but we will be able to do it by sharing the base displacement layer so holding the shift key, just drag and drop on top of my other layer to share the first layer. So this one will be an instance of the, uh, of the first one that I did. Then I will select the share base displacement layer, put it in another group, call this one base bump GRP. And I will use a copy channel to isolate the green channel. So let's call this isolate green copy channel. 
And the advantage of this technique is that um, because I have the base bump that is separated from the, from the base displacement, I will be able to adjust the value of the bump. So something that I can see is that from the moment the base displacement has been isolated, I just see uh, only the bump information on my, uh, on my model. But I want to set the group for the bump value into the overlay mode. Uh, so this is uh, in okay. Uh, I find it back. So this is in contrast. So you can find it in contrast and put it into overlay. Okay. So having it put into overlay mode will allow you to have the information that are separated. And from, for the, from now, you will be able to set uh, the intensity of the bump. So just lower the opacity of your group to reduce or to uh, add more intensity for the bump. And something that is cool with this technique is that uh, because the, the base displacement layer has been shared, this will be just an instance. So if you want to paint all the displacement information for your shader, you will be able to do it because you will, um, you will just have to select the shared displacement layer or the base displacement layer and then paint back using your displacement map. <clears throat> so pen back all the displacement information that you want on your model. And this layer is an instance, so every instance that you will find in your uh, project, uh, in your, within your object, will, will have the exact same information. Okay, so this is it for this tutorial. I hope that you find this information useful. I'll see you probably in the next video.